everyone, listen to this special announcement. Here on Late Night, I've brought with me one special guest. The best of the best. He's so good, I made the whole show about him. I brought with me White Dragon 7, developer of Ready at Dawn. Also the developer of this game that we all see him play in front of us, Echo Arena. So let's go ahead, let's jump in, and let's find out how awesome he is. And how awesome everything he's done is. Come on in. All right, everybody, my guest tonight, I have with me Ready at Dawn developer, White Dragon 7. I'm just gonna refer to him as White Dragon. Yeah, <laughs> How's it easier. going, man? Hey, it's going pretty well. How you doing? I'm happy, excited, honestly <laughs> lost for words, but I have too many words if you get what I mean. Uh, I'm just really happy you're here. Uh, oh, I wanna take an opportunity, let the viewers know how I was able to get you in here. I saw you and Guygasm playing a game and I just shot my shot, right? Yeah, it just shot your shot and had to go through a whole process. It was great, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it was worth it. It, it really was. Um, I would, I was going through Wyvern, right? And uh, Wyvern's so nice. And and just it was yeah, a Wyvern's long process, great. but it was it was a cool process. <laughs> Honestly, I I was excited. Cool. Uh, so we got you here. Let's start some questions, right? Um, how many interviews do you feel like you you've been a part of or? Uh, very few. Honestly, most of the time I'm the person in the background setting people up in game or doing other stuff. I listen to the interviews, but that's, I'm usually not the focus of them. <laughs> that's amazing. So then, hey, you're the focus today. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. So, White Dragon, <laughs> one thing I want to start with, you are a part of creating this incredibly beautiful game that we all love, we all play. How does it feel to yourself be a player in it? Uh, it feels pretty great. I mean... When I was first working on this game, I knew that I loved it. <laughs> and I was excited to get more and more people playing just so we could have more and more competitions. So, honestly, this is, uh, this is fantastic. This is everything I hoped for when making this game. So, I mean, going into it, right, because this is virtual reality. Uh, I, I also realized Ready at Dawn has made other games. Have you been developer for other projects or is this like your first child with, with the company? Yeah, I worked on other projects as well. Uh, we were working on Deformers back when I first started. And then Lone Echo and this project were simultaneous, so I've been on all of them. I also most recently worked on Lone Echo too, as, so there's a lot of stuff going through. I tend to have a hand in most things. So you said Deformers, and I'm sorry because I don't know too much about it, but I think I've heard that before. and. Those little, like, like the watermelon and all those, does that come from Yeah, there? exactly. Like all the little squishy blobs and stuff that roll around. Yep, <laughs> that game. So all of that is Easter eggs from other games you guys have been a part of. Exactly. Dude, looking at the lobby is going to be very different now when you see those toys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially when you, you put them in that special customization spot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the sound? The sound it makes? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Exactly. Was that your idea? No, that was not my idea. That was, I think, one of our uh, sound developers. Got, they were like, <laughs> they just basically threw it out there, and they're like, "Hey, this sounds like a cool thing, right?" And everybody's just like, "Yeah, sure, why not?" <laughs> one thing that amazes me about you, uh, Rad David, or, or Nathan P, as well, is um, during the VRML community season, you guys compete alongside all of us as well, right? Just like a normal player. Yeah, exactly. So Tell us about that experience. What made you guys go, hey, we want to get into this community league as well? So actually, it started out with a guy. He was posting in his chat, looking for a team, trying to get members. David and I saw it. We were just like, eh, like we might be interested. And then he was like, wait, seriously? And so like he, hold op he held open the spots while we were like considering it. And he was like, I, I just want to make sure the developers are serious. He had other like better players offering to join. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he decided to go with us instead. And uh that was our start. It was great. <laughs> if, uh, if I was in Godgasm's place, I'd be a little scared, man, because I'd feel like I always have to be, like, the best of the best behaved in the game just because, like, I'd be kind oh, of representing you guys. That's certainly not true. No. I, I mean, we also have to make clear that Guy is not a developer, you know? Of so you can kind of just get away with what he wants. <laughs> I figure with a name like Guygasm, he, he gets away with some stuff. Absolutely. No. <laughs> so... In the focus of making Echo Arena, what, what kind of thoughts came into making this game? Things like the geometry or 
what how would we play this sport things like that i mean if you're asking like how we got onto echo arena versus other games we might have tried out uh honestly it was just a, it was a long iterative process i think pretty early on we knew we wanted to play something similar to sports because uh, that was a more uh i'd say easy process for us to go with like it was something that came more naturally that like gives you that tactile feel with your hands that more people we thought could identify with um but there were a lot of things that we experimented with and trying out <laughs> like originally we had it so that you could die in echo vr and you would respawn like back in base would that be through the punching or no we, i mean we actually had like weapons <laughs> that you could use no way. <laughs> yeah they're typically just variants of guns i mean it was it was all prototype stuff. I mean, some of the stuff you might see in, like, combat now. Um, oh, so basically Echo Combat and Echo Arena were going to be one whole game, and then you turned it into two separate ones? Yeah, I mean, in a sense, we, we really weren't sure where we wanted to go with it, so we were just trying things out. And it turned out that dying kind of sucked because it took you, like, 20 seconds to get back into the action, even <laughs> if you respawned pretty quick. Yeah. So we ended up on stunning as a way to interview with other players. So I'm happy that you guys did that. Like, honestly, I couldn't imagine Echo Arena being any other way. You know what I mean? Like, this game has a whole following, like a whole community of people. And at some point, it feels like most of the people in this game are more our friends than our IRL friends, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. So to be a part of making that and creating that, that's amazing. Again, thank you for something like that. So, you know, right now we're recording uh, Late Night with Ivan Thrive here in the Echo Arena itself. How does it feel to see something like like a like a talk show come out um, in a game that you guys created, which is completely different to what you created the game to be about? Does that honestly, make any sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I, I feel like this is the future. And in fact, like this isn't far off from what we imagined uh, people using this game for initially. Like we go into game and have meetings in in here all the time uh, for work. <laughs> So it's become a pretty natural part of our process just to interact with people like this, especially over the pandemic. It's been an, something that's nice and different compared to just video calls. Yeah. Well, it, it's been amazing because you, you see so much content creation come out of this. Like when we started the show, we started it in the lobby and then we've just been slowly moving it around. Um, and we just ended up here in the arena at the end. But yeah, there's you guys, there's something about it that makes me like I feel like I'm face to face with you right now. <laughs> like it's hard to describe. I feel like it doesn't come through on camera as well. But like when you're in it, you're like this is how I know a lot of people in VR who I talk with and like I've never met in real life. See, in regards to that, I had uh, some of the owners of uh, like the NEPA teams here, and they had the same comments where it's like it's a whole different experience. It just feels weird. And I even told them I wouldn't want to do this interview like on a Skype call or anything because it just feels more personal. Like like if I'm having you right in front of me. Yeah, obviously this feels like the most natural place to inter be interviewed for me in our game. Well, I can imagine. So here's here's a question, um, and then I'm gonna take a little commercial break. Um, do you feel like you spend more time inside Echo Arena than you do in real life? As the developer of the game, I'm sure you have to be in here a lot. Hmm. That's a that's a good question. Definitely don't spend more time in game, <laughs> uh, but I would say there was a time, at, like especially when we first started playing, um, yeah. I was in game for like almost eight hours a day, uh, for like five days a week, you know. And yeah. I remember like getting out of the headset and trying to move myself around in the real world by like grabbing walls and rails and stuff. Like I would just naturally reach out and try to propel myself that way. <laughs> so definitely. Uh, mess with my real life perspective a little bit after spending so much time in here but yeah nowadays it's a little bit more chill <laughs> that's hilarious all right so we're gonna do that let's take a quick commercial break and then i'll have you come right back one american with a burning desire to save the world from high prices he is the stuntman that saved the world he is looking to destroy high prices <laughs> 
a man that brought the world together because of his love for Kawasaki. One man strapped to a 2021 Terex KRX 1000, the stunt man that saved the world. Get your favorite Kawasaki motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides today at Holzhauer Pro Motorsports in Nashville, Illinois. The Big St. Charles Motorsports, the jackpot of motorcycles and power sports. The largest inventory and the best brands under one roof. Can-Am, Honda, Kawasaki, KTM, Sea-Doo, Ski-Doo, Slingshot, Suzuki, Yamaha, and more. Big St. Charles Motorsports, located in St. Charles, Missouri. And we're back. Uh, I have White Dragon with me here today still. Uh, so White Dragon, I'm going to start asking a few more questions. Um, they're probably going to get a little harder. And again, you don't have to answer any of these. You can say no comment, right? Uh, <laughs> so for the first question I really want to ask uh is there like a lore between like like lone echo uh echo arena or e lone echo 2 like behind the scenes that we don't that we don't really get but we should probably get in a comic book or something i'm pretty sure the in-universe lore as i understand it and maybe another developer is going to end up correcting me if i'm wrong um <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see but I'm pretty sure the in-universe lore is that uh, Echo Arena is all a simulation to help train Echo units in various things and how to interact and get better with their bodies. Um, so that's why all the models are pristine. You don't see like the cuts and scrapes that you might see in Lone Echo. Um, yeah. So that's all set up by the corporation that you might know in Lone Echo if you uh, did some digging with audio logs. <laughs> so. Yeah, there is a little bit of in-game lore, and I believe, like, I forget how the arena itself goes in, but you know there's the disc in Lone Echo as well um, that Jack and Liv will use to shoot hoops sometimes. <laughs> it's funny, because um, I just started playing Lone Echo 2, um, and there's, like, just in the beginning, I think I got stuck for, like, 30 minutes just throwing the disc around uh, instead of actually focusing on the game, and I was like, oh, God damn it. Wrong game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can definitely spend a lot of time in that game just messing around. That's part of the fun. That is, yeah. So now that I've mentioned Lone Echo 2, I wanted to ask, how did you feel about it uh, coming out? And now that it's out, you know, the interaction people have with it, do you, do you enjoy it? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, our, most of our reception has been pretty positive. Uh, Lone Echo 2 was, it was a long time coming. <laughs> it was a lot, a lot of work that went into that, a lot of late nights. Um, but it seems like it was all pretty worthwhile. And honestly, I think there's some experiences in that game. Like, I know there's a few key moments that I love that just really uh, stick with me. And I hope other players too. So honestly, it's, it's great that it's out and done and that people get to enjoy it. Also, I want to say another perk for why you guys should go get Lone Echo 2. That skin he has, the one I have right now, these chassis, you get them when you buy Lone Echo 2. So that, that's kind of a, a perk, right? Definitely worth it. Th does that perk go away or is that just anytime you buy Lone Echo 2 at any point in life? Anytime you buy Lone Echo 2. Ooh, as long as it's the nice same chassis. account. Yeah, very true, very true. <laughs> so one more. Let's lead on to this question right here. Um, I want to ask about chassis. When, okay. when you're going through this process of developing these new chassis for the season pass, um, there's so many people, you know, having their own ideas on what you guys are going with. Is it a linear path? Like, like, you know, a certain point in time that we're going towards, or is it just kind of, you guys brainstorm ideas and yo, this is awesome. Roll that one out. Uh, all I can say is that we're trying to keep ourselves pretty open. Uh, so we get a lot of brainstorming, a lot of cool ideas, like you mentioned, come through and uh, we pick and choose the ones that seem the most viable for us. So does that mean that one day you're going to finally let us get a chassis with a nice tuxedo on? Because that's what I'm waiting for. I can't make any promises. <laughs> oh, man, dude, because I'm saying here, let me pitch it to you really quick. Just like this for late night, having the chassis with a nice tuxedo, nice little red bow tie. That's going to be awesome. I probably wouldn't use it in the arena to play, but I would use it to record. Right? Uh, that probably that's... just kills the pitch because I'd be the only one using it. <laughs> 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 no, no. Okay. So, you know, talking about leagues, right? We kind of mentioned uh, there is no team being in VRML, you being a member of the team. Um, and there's been different leagues that have created themselves around the time. Uh, right now, uh, 
the the NEPA Pro Series has started up, right? Uh, again, this show is on the NEPAVRPro.com website. Uh, how do you feel about seeing things like that? I think it's great. Honestly, this is this is sort of what I hoped would come out of this game. Like, we're really an uh, intermediary between real life sports and like esports and we have this physicality associated with our game that isn't necessarily demanding you to be physically fit but sort of encourages it in a way like i've definitely gotten a few workouts out of playing for a while <laughs> um but no seeing the leagues and everything form around that like it's great and honestly i hope it's more to come until we get like giant stadiums where you know you, you see those like lol those League of Legends games where they just like have all those people and like things and I just want to see like people jumping up on their pads and doing crazy cool moves in real life and then seeing how that translates like in game real time. Now I know how I would feel to see that but I can only imagine your feeling as a guy that made the game to see it get to that extent. That would be insane for, for you wouldn't it? Yeah it really would be. <laughs> we had a little bit of that at like some of the first OCs and it was a pleasure to watch. That's awesome. I have a feeling that we'll be seeing that then, right? You know, like the Nepa Charity Land event coming up soon. Uh, by any chance, do you do you feel like some of you will be there? Uh, I mean, I don't know if I don't think any of us have been invited personally. I, I mean, or maybe I haven't. <laughs> maybe somebody else has. But I uh... have to take care of that. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, I generally like participating in events and just having a good time. I mean, I'm a bit more casual in terms of practice, but. You know, I'm, I'm okay at this game. I feel like okay, I can that's a throw lie. down. You are not casual. <laughs> when I met you, you and Gygasm were like faster than like, so there's these two players, right? Chocolate and Sweet Tooth who are supposed to be like the fastest ones. I swear to Jesus, you guys were like faster than them when I played oh, with you. Oh no, I, I played against Chocolate and Sweet Tooth. They're definitely faster. <laughs> Those guys are so good. <laughs> they're, they're incredible. Right, yeah, no, they're insane. Uh, uh, yeah, no, no, no. But you guys were so fast, I couldn't even keep up. And I feel like I play at least at a platinum level. And you guys were out here just destroying. I, you didn't need me. I was on your team, and I really, I wasn't even needed. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess our team is diamond level. But I think, like, the highest we hit was rank 15. But, you know, maybe crazy. maybe I can that's say awesome. we're the best casual team, you know? So, I, I'm going to ask this. This is totally off script. It doesn't matter, but... Uh, from there is no team i've seen some teams called there is no practice and then like there's no other are you guys all associated together i have to ask just because it's so funny they have a fork i am is... i'm pretty sure that they were just copying us actually i think we had a we had a grudge match against them at one point and like the loser of the match had to change their name so that it didn't seem as close you know <laughs> Yeah. And we won. We ended up winning that match, and I think they actually ended up changing their team name for us. <laughs> All right, that's good. Yeah, because, yeah, they really were kind of copying. You guys have, like, the bent spoon. They had a bent fork. I think it was intentional, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. No, it totally was intentional, yeah. That made me think it was, like, a sister team. That's why I wanted to ask that totally off topic and random. It just hit my head. Uh, so in regards to talking about, you know, pro players and everything, have you been keeping up with that? Do you know the, the names of some of these teams? I mean, I know the recent name change of Ignite from Joker. Um, no, so I meant more like like the the Nepa Pro teams, you know, like New York. Oh, teams, the Nepa Pro Austin teams. Austin Burners. Honestly, I I got sent a, a thing and I was looking at that. Um, I mean, it was cool to see like a lot of the older players were joining those teams as well. Like I saw Palador on uh one of the teams, and he's a long time classic. He's on the Denver um, Raptors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so it, it was it was really cool to see. I mean, it looked like a lot of the top players were really participating in this tournament. Yeah, no, we we really packed house over there with them. So I mean, just off any of those things, maybe you have one. Do you want do you want to let us know if you were gonna watch the pro series, which team you'd be rooting for? Because you know we want to treat this like like if it was the NFL and everything. You know, like for example, <laughs> myself, I'm a huge fan of the LA Chargers in football. For for you know the Napa Pro Series, Nashville Legends, I love you guys. You know <laughs> something like that. Oh man, I really should have done my research before coming on the the Napa talk show, huh? Um, but <laughs> what I can say <laughs> is that uh, I, out of all the players that I, I've played against and seen, I, I think Akisulator he's playing in this uh, tournament, right? Yeah, Akisulator is the captain of Echo Club Kansas City. 
Yeah, I mean, I think of everybody that I've faced in this game, he's probably the most talented player. And I would think that their team's going to go really far. So I, I'd say they'd be one to watch. But of course, anyone who has the Ignite players on their team, they're probably going to go pretty far too. So their teamwork and all of their individual skills are top notch. I'm going to give you a little lesson on that, you know, just in case. Orlando Cyclones has Game as their captain. Uh, the Nashville Legends have Kong as their captain alongside Dash XL. Um, and then funny enough, St. Louis Hustle has Ryan and Rocks Titan. And then on his own island, we got Jay Walker on the Florida Laser Sharks. Oh, that was smart to separate them all out. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> then it would have been a super together. team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, those those teams are all ones to watch. But honestly, in terms of rock like capability, I think uh, Oculus Sator is going to be the one to to carry their team to victory. Dude, no, I keep saying this. I I, I feel weird because I say it so much like on the show when I talk about like my top five. Og is on that top five, so like I am excited to see him as well. But for me, uh, I don't know. Yeah, no, Nashville Legends are awesome uh, only because they have Crispy Dash, who's on my VRML team. <laughs> but other yeah. than that second pick new york kings because it's strem Bitsky and al who are both in my top five yeah strem is pretty great i mean i played with uh jay walker and uh he's really talented as well like i've been on his team and against him it's been really fun public matches when that does end up happening <laughs> <laughs> so i'm gonna close it off with this one last question honestly in-game mechanics you know things like uh, the Joker train have been created or some of that stuff. Did you guys think that that would come out when you first developed the game? So, I mean, that's an interesting question. Honestly, the re-grabbing was some of the things that we ended up building the game a, a bit around. Um, cause we initially toyed with the idea of like, oh, what would happen if you had like proper physics with pushing on people in space and it, would make you very sick <laughs> so uh, as far as regrabbing goes yeah we ended up uh doing that pretty early on in our testing and uh just trying out different things with gameplay and that's how we got around fast now we never expected it to be as fast as it got <laughs> but uh there there are a lot of things that have come that we didn't really that we hoped may not be a potential issue the joker train that's a really interesting one because like I'm still on the fence of whether that one's really OP or if it's just uh, really intimidating to see someone spiraling around somebody else. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I mean, that one I, we kind of anticipated as well as far as holding on to somebody else. I mean, that's one of the reasons that we had the uh, disc slow down. If you're holding the disc and holding on to somebody else, they can't go faster um, than the max speed as if you're just holding the disc. Um, but the real crazy thing, honestly, that I saw that really like tore apart my expectations, something that I thought about, but I thought literally would never happen. And that's people just crawling fast enough, like with their arms, you know, <laughs> to where it makes it so like it's actually competitively viable to crawl on the ground while having somebody hold them. And they're going so fast that the other players, like if they misstep, they're just not catching them. <laughs> That is definitely one thing I never anticipated. I don't think I have ever seen that, and I feel like you might have just created a new meta for those I've never seen or heard that. Uh, it's actually, it, it was created by some players, and then it got swiftly banned. <laughs> as, oh, so uh, it's a banned thing. Never mind, then, guys. Don't use yep. it. Don't use it. Don't use it. It's banned. <laughs> you know, in regards to banned, uh, here, here's the last one, a, a controversial one, the half cycle. Here's my thing to the half cycle. It's literally a zero G juke. We're in a zero G environment. It's a zero G juke. I'm so okay with it, but it's a very controversial thing. Half cycling is, it's definitely a, an interesting one. I'm actually okay with half cycling as it is. Cool. I think the, the tricky part though, is that if you allow half cycling, right, then it gets easier to hide. Uh, I mean, we call it stremming, right? I don't know if there's another term for it, um, it where you can basically. make yeah, where you can make that speed go even faster than you should. And so I can understand why you might want to just ban half cycling to make sure the other one can never even come up even by accident. Um, but yeah, I also, I mean, 
I, that's one of, one of my things that I like doing is on launch, if you're grabbing the disc as the QB and then you like, you turn sideways and duck, you know, and then they just launch right past you. Yeah. It always felt really fun, but I can understand. No, like again, I understand why it, why it would be banned in some of the leagues, but then we are in a zero G environment and half cycling just makes sense as a zero G juke. That's what I've been calling <laughs> it. We're trying to coin it. If it ever catches on, I hope it does. Cause that sounds awesome. Yeah, I agree. I mean, anything right. that uses your real play space, it, it's difficult to balance. I mean, everybody's technically also supposed to be playing on a four by four pad, right? So, oh, you heard that guys, you, you really should be. So <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to close it off from there. Uh, White Dragon, I tend to do little game shows after this, but I was actually wondering, instead of a game show with you, you can maybe uh, walk me and JG around the arena. Let us know some stories of some of the stuff that happened in the beginning of development with those. Is that cool? Yeah, sure. I mean, I can try to give a, a, my knowledge of this map as it was created, if that's what you're looking for. That would be awesome. Thank you so much. So let's do right. that. Let's head over to that. Cool. All right. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you want I'm to learn a little you. bit more about the arena and its history, right? I mean, one of the things that was really fun when we were first demoing this game and showing it off, like we had... Uh, I mean, we call them jackpods because of Jack, our character in Lone Echo. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but you used to have to, like, pull the handle every time you went back out. So people would get stuck in these, like, pods and, like, not figure out how to get out or there'd be, like, some issues and they'd just be, like, trying to flounder around. And so we ended up just, like, to fix, to solve all our issues, we just cut the pod exit entirely and was like hey yeah you're just free to move around immediately <laughs> like, that was something we decided on just to save time and effort and because a lot of people found it was kind of a hassle you know it's like a, it's a cool immersive thing our game didn't need it as much no that's funny i, I remember seeing a youtube video like the hasco 7 did a whole video and it was like seven minutes long her just teaching people how to get out of the shoot <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> that, that was part of the problem was you had to really be taught and we kind of teach that in our tutorial but not everybody goes through the tutorial the same way, you know? Yeah. Oh, man. And then, yeah, for our scoreboard, I mean, we actually, like, we've added so much UI on this initially, like, that wasn't there initially. Like, the team's not ready. Like, having a pause in our private matches, like, giving different signals to different people so you can just keep, like, your attention on what's happening for each person. And then, like, even the stats that we show here, we didn't have everything initially until we realized like, hey, what are the things that like people kind of find most valuable? Yeah. Um, and so we, we sort of landed on like, of course, points and assists, and then saves were another one that people really cared about. And then stuns too, because there's some people who just like to go into game and just brawl it out. <laughs> that, that's so, yeah. the, the episode before this one, I had Gilligan. I'm sure you've heard of him and his stuns. Oh, I we've played against Gilligan and their team many a time. He got punched uh, out a lot. <laughs> so I think what's what's funny about like these launchers and stuff is originally uh, we were planning to have like I mean we didn't know exactly how many launchers and things we had although we knew that we wanted some way for people to get out into the action fast because um, moving fast felt really good and it was fun to just be like in it uh, immediately and so at one point like through iterations we were trying out like just a single launch tube like in the center right right behind the goal you might imagine <laughs> and, like uh, uh, the level designer at the time was like actually let's try out like this five launch tube version and i couldn't see any use for having more than like two launch tubes one on the right one on the left but like now you have people using all the different launch tubes for different scenarios right like you have the top launch tube for when the disc is in your possession you got these two for jousting most of the time and then you have this one when like the disc is usually in the other team's possession and they do like that undercut where they're using the geo just to hide themselves until the last second when they're zooming super fast and like yeah, that sort of innovation on using these tubes was really remarkable to me i was like oh cool like turns out <laughs> the other developers like they they knew what they were doing, they guessed right, and like, I mean, we got a lot of talented people figuring this stuff out. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, one of the other things that was interesting, too, is like, you might be surprised to hear that at one point we toyed around with the idea of having like a backboard that kind of rejected all your bounce shots. <laughs> so it made it almost, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. So it made it like impossible almost to get all the back shot, just just to see like how it felt and like it was almost unanimous like that day when we were playing it during. It's like, uh, no, no, we want our shots to go as in as possible, and like they really took that idea to heart when making this whole arena. Like, they actually um, modeled out how to get bounce shots from a lot of different locations so that, honestly, this whole arena kind of feeds into the goal, which I think creates some of those really, like, lucky shots you see from across the map where someone just, like, was clearing the disc and then, like, all of a sudden, like, if they get that crazy bounce shot right at the end. And those are pretty fun and cool, wacky moments that we really appreciate. So, so I'm not sure if everybody feels is... the same. What you're saying is from any of these, just finding the right angle, you're, you're sure to get a shot. Almost certainly. There's al Almost from any location, you could probably get a bounce shot if you just knew what you're doing. It might take one or two bounces, but like, yeah, almost That's always. Awesome. So, that was <laughs> on that note too, I'm talking about taking cross map shots, like figuring out how many points each shot was going to be worth was its own hassle. Because initially we tried out like, one point up close two points from far and then like three points if you're like really far out you know yeah but it made those like kind of lucky shots feel really uh, game changing when maybe they shouldn't be because like a three pointer was already quite a bit of a difference and like having three times the score of just being inside the bubble felt really bad because that means like one team gets a lucky shot and bam they're super far ahead you know assuming they're yeah. roughly equal still so we ended up settling on the two points and the three points just to make it a bit more fair because, I mean, only 50% increase for shooting outside the bubble. But what's amazing to me is, like, how well this bubble has held up um, in making it so that the goalies have a decent chance. Like, almost all the top goalies, they're able to block, like, any shot that's coming from beyond the three-point line as long as they're set up in goal, you know, and yeah. not being harassed by somebody else. <laughs> So like another, it's, sorry, another cool no, no, thing I, I, I had just recently noticed, you know, you're talking about this bubble, the disc itself actually tells you when you're about to shoot a three or a two, right? Yeah, it actually does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so depending on what team you're on, we take into account like uh, what bubble you're in or outside of. So you might see that three if you're holding it on the blue end, but you get into that orange bubble and it'll show up as a two. I don't think most people notice that, but it's a nice little thing that's there regardless. I think it's only been two weeks since I noticed that. <laughs> so I'm still excited about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what's funny too is like, these ramps were, we at one point had a ramp that would like lead straight into the goal if you managed to roll it perfectly. That ended up being a bit too easy for people to do. So oh, okay. instead we got the ramp as is and I think there's like still certain angles you can get that go straight into the goal. I believe like touching right here because um, we didn't want to get rid of it completely. But there's a there's a lot of stuff that was made to like make this game a bit more balanced. And so you, you didn't get just guaranteed three pointers and it, it's all skill based. And this map had a had a lot of work done to get it to where it is. Is there yeah. one Geo in here that you kind of wish got taken out? I, I feel like a lot of people would say this one. Right here. But oh, no, that Geo is amazing. <laughs> uh, let me show you. What? I mean, as far as Geo that I wish got taken out, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure most people would be like, oh, like, they hit this one when they're trying to take half court shots, and they just oh, hate yeah. it. You know, and so they're, they're just like, oh no, like it's always so hard to like identify, but like this one, no, I can't imagine cutting this one. Like this one, like if you shoot, from here you fly off and then you hit the ready at dawn symbol well and then you miss like i do but if you hit it perfectly you hit the pyramid and go straight in you know there's a lot of there's a lot of cool bounce shots you can set up from here and then you also have like the boot passes as people yeah. call them but yeah i mean that's that's most of what i got for the history of this map i don't really have too much else oh man i probably made this hard for the camera guy at the very end <laughs> <laughs> no, White Dragon, thank you for coming on. Honestly, it was a great experience. I'm I'm happy to have you here with us. So yeah. we're gonna cut it off. The show's over. Again, thank you so much to any of our viewers. Uh come play some Echo Arena with us. Have a nice day. Bye. Yeah, thanks for the invite. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs>